said this a few times today, but there's so many new people. I don't know if you know, this. looks to me like there's over 20,000 of us here. And two people came from across the road, there were 300 people. Anyway, I'm the guy, uh, I used to live in a Monica Motel down the road, I don't know. And I'm the guy who uh, gave my music and arts festival permit to my line and the Western, uh, what do you call it, Woodstock Ventures. I wanted to have it on my place up the road, but I had 15 acres of swamp. And so I said, hey, my milkman, Max Yasta, Great cottage cheese, a nice chicken. He's got a pig farm with a lot of cows, and I have a permit. And get a permit of every day. I gave him my permit for one dollar, to make it legal. You can see it on the internet at woodstock690.com. They have a thing about it. There. Anyhow, they ran me out of town, all that stuff. But what was happening is that I got Max to agree. He said, look, you and your festival for 10 years, 12 people must have come. Let's do it. He wanted $50 to clean up. We thought it'd be 5,000 people. Within 24 hours, the papers and press were saying it was 50,000, then 100,000 people. So the prices were going up to 55,000. My client said, hey, that, we can live with that. Then the town, to make this short, I know you want to hear singing and I can't sing, but the town threatened us the Bethel, and they said, we're going to close you down, we're going to make a human barricade across 17 feet on Friday night, so that you and the drugged out hippies and degenerates can't come into this wonderful community. That Monday night, I panicked, everything was getting set, and the festival was Friday, and I said to my client, what are we going to do? They're going to shut us down. And I said, as usual, he smiled, I can deal with it. Go to, in my motel room there, I went to NBC Radio, go in there, and uh, tell the country what you just told me to come on out. And I went on the radio, I never had been on the radio before, and I said, they're trying to stop us. And whoever he is, me, you want to come out to Woodstock and have this music and arts festival and peace and love, you better come out now. That was Monday. Three in the morning, Tuesday, there was a lot of uh, noise and racket. We put on the lights, we got our baseball bats. Of course, we thought we'd be attacked again by the local rednecks. But this time, it was five lanes of white headlights Coming up here, there wasn't even a sign where we were. I put on all the lights. I said, well, we would stop. The traffic was backed up to the George Washington Bridge, 89 miles away. And for the first time, I had 14 years in this town. For the first time, there were more of us than of them. Friday morning, the town committee, who didn't get enough money, it seems, came out across the highway and folding on, and it was a parking lot Friday morning. You we were here, you knew you had to park your car 50 miles away, and they hollered, get out of here, you priest, etc. Nobody knew who they were or cared who they were, they just walked straight on, and we had a lot of other going on, a lot of other. And I want to say this one political message, since this is a rally for freedom of speech, that's what this is. We do not have a permit for a concert. This is a rally, and we have some people entertaining you to rally. And it's going to go on late. We're running late, but we're going to get all the acts that have come from all over the world here. We're going to show, I did a movie called Ticket to Freedom, Woodstock, in 94. We're going to show it here. Tonight and tomorrow night around 2 a.m. And uh, it runs 72 minutes. It starts uh, Richie Havens, who sings three new freedom songs, especially for my film, and Michael Borgari talking about freedom of speech. Uh, it's a funny movie. I hope you come and see it. So now I'm going to give this back to, uh, oh, I had one item on the agenda, Kenny, I didn't tell you about I'd like to say. 
Uh, when I was on CBS, I toured a lot talking about Woodstock. And I was on CBS showing my book, Knock on Woodstock, in 94. They wouldn't hold it up to the camera because it said the gay man who made Woodstock happen. And in Dallas, we don't use a three-letter word like that. And I said, who the hell do you think put on the festival? We had a couple of thousand lesbians, tough, beautiful women put up the stage. Who do you think writes the songs and sing them? They're not all your kind of family. They couldn't tell me more if it was a live newscast. So that was also what this is about, freedom of speech for everybody. Okay, babe, so enjoy yourself, and I'll see you later two more. Oh, you're tired. Don't you dare to the